Welcome back to this already, the final segment of today's Price of Business. And this is a, a special extended segment uh, with my good friend Chris Kitt, regular contributor on the Price of Business. We talk about sports and the entertainment uh, business. We've got a really special segment uh, today. He's been talking it up all week. And when he talks up a great guest coming up, that means a lot because you have had some of the most amazing <laughs> guests over the last year. It's been pretty extraordinary, uh, really, the last couple of years. And so always delighted to have uh, have you on and your guests. Before we get to your guests, though, tell us about uh, what you do over at Chris Kidd, K-I-D-D.com. Tell us what uh, what your business is all about. Well, my business, I'm a financial coach, and I just, you know, my mission in life is really to, to help solve financial problems for as many people as I can. Uh, a lot of times that may be, uh, you know, somebody... I would say like my guest, but actually my guest has got a pretty good handle on it. But, uh, you know, people who come from uh, a pro athlete uh, arena to business owners to, you know, just college kids and, you know, basically just learning to to handle money and deal with uh, financial issues. And then on the really the the higher uh, income, higher net worth scale, usually uh, dealing with like investments and stuff and how to be uh, you know, more on top of your stuff rather than having somebody just manage it, which is, you know, one of the problems that a lot of uh, people fall into um, coming, especially from my guest's uh, ex industry. So, but anyway, I want to get to him so he can share his story. It's really awesome. And uh, like he said, I, I talked it up this week for, for a reason. Uh, my guest is Marcus Ogden. He's a former NFL player. His uh, brother is actually a hall of famer. And, um, he he's got a lot more to his resume than the NFL. I mean, he's been a great businessman and we'll let him get into that. He's also the author of a, a new book we'll talk about. Good to have you on, Marcus. Thanks guys. How you guys doing today? Doing great. Do you want to mention early the website ogdenelitefootballcamp.com. Why don't you give us a little bit of more uh, you know, with the luxury of a little more time for this segment, a little more depth of your background and what led you to starting these camps? Uh, you know, Kevin, I'm actually from Washington, D.C. Uh, as Chris said a moment ago, I'm the brother of Hall of Fame off the tackle, Jonathan Ogden. We were raised by our father, single parent, Cheryl P. Ogden, uh, from the time I was eight and Jonathan was 14. Actually, my father had a degree in economics, and he uh, got his master's at, from the University of Maryland. He graduated from Howard University. That's where I attended school as well. So he actually had a job with the Federal Home Loans Bank of New York in their D.C. office. He was a um, and he was a stock he was a bonds trader. So growing up, we had a very good understanding of fun, uh, finance. We knew how to watch our money. We knew how to make money. We knew how to also to be very frugal, uh, be very cognizant of what we were spending uh, from the age of you know of birth going up. And I think that's where a lot of athletes tend to kind of fall through the cracks um, with such high percentage of people being broke after playing football is that the financial literacy piece doesn't come in until they're probably in their late teens, early 20s. And by that, that, that time, if you're 21 years old and pretty much you have a big, huge contract coming for billions of dollars, I don't care what you say. I don't, you can't change someone's mindset in three months. As, you know, we were raised at it for almost you know, 15, you know, 15 to 20 years. So I believe that literacy starts from a young age, and if people can learn how to save and invest money from, from a younger age, We'll see society have more money, you know, in their investments in their portfolios as they grow older. Yeah, very good, Chris. Well, Marcus, you uh, you know, you played several years in the NFL, but you know, like you said, you had a really good understanding and you know a great foundation. Um, you left the league and started a, a company that was uh, very successful, and but there was a kind of a situation you ran into later on that we talked about the other day that. Uh, you know, learn, talk about picking the right people and, and things that you learned from that situation. Well, guys, um, I started a company called Caden Premier Enterprises. Uh, we were the, uh, the largest minority uh, site contract in the state of Maryland when we went out of business. I got with my partner back in 2008, 2009. I chose the wrong person. Um, he did not have the experience level in my industry that he claimed to have, but again, I don't blame anybody but myself. It was my fault for not vetting him, for not, you know, doing background checks on him, my employees. So we grew from zero dollars to a little under, a little over twelve million in about a five-year period. Took on a project in the spring of 2012 for one of the largest GCs in the country. Uh, we ended up doing the project for about four million dollars. It was going very well. 
about halfway through, we hit a snag and we could not dry or dewater the site. I had to come back and use my own manpower and my own resources. I spent about $2 million in a 90-day period. The job got completed. Went to get my change order signed from the owner from the GC. He said, thank you very much, Mr. Ogden. Job well done. Great work. We are not going to pay your change order. And in a 90-day period, Jim, I went from having millions of dollars, being a very successful, young uh, business owner that was on the ball, that was doing very, very well in life, to being almost pretty much flat broke. I had to file for personal bankruptcy. I lost my home. I lost my cars. Uh, I, I lost my credit. I lost pretty much everything that I owned in a 90-day period on one bad project. Wow. That's well, incredible. You know what? Go ahead, Chris. Well, there's a, a really interesting uh, story with that that I think it's in your book, but I don't know if you want to bring that up as well. But there's a lot of stuff in – People have no idea. Is uh, we actually had one of the guys from the NFL Player Association on um, somewhere recently, and a lot of people have no idea. I had no idea about you know, what you told me. You know, as far as the NFL, talk about how they stepped in. Uh, you know, just to, to kind of help out to get you uh, to where you could kind of make that turnaround and get back on your feet and get things. You know, oh, start gladly, building again. Chris. So. As I was cleaning out my desk, um, and I found my NFL players card, and I looked on the back, and I called up uh, the senior office, spoke to Mr. Andre Collins, worked at D.C. office, had me come down to D.C. He said, Marshall, we're going to help you relocate. Uh, if there was jobs, maybe in Miami, L.A., uh, you know, Chicago. But actually, they found me a job in Durham, North Carolina, working for Merrill Lynch, which is kind of phenomenal because my wife's family is probably about 20 minutes away. So this is by the grace of God that we actually got to where we are here with great family support, which is great for us personally and professionally. Mm. Uh, after that, um, he told me to apply for the Gene Upshaw Trust Fund, which is a fund where when players get fined or get you know late hits or don't have their socks up high enough, all that money goes into a different programs. And one of the programs is the Gene Upshaw Trust Fund, which helps players. It's a financial bridge gap assistance. It is not a permanent fix. It is a short-term relief assistance for dire need players that are in financial distress. I ended up um, submitting my application, uh, and as I was driving home from work, my wife called me and said that the NFL had approved us for four months' grant. It was total about $14,000. They paid my rent. They paid some other utility bills. They paid some other insurance bills. I was able to get my life back together, get on my feet, and thank God for the NFL for stepping in, that's what my title is called, Sleepless Nights, the NFL Business and Family, because the family side of the NFL shine bright when I need them the most. That's a fantastic story, and I think, you know, we don't hear a lot of that, and I think that's uh, phenomenal. I do want to also mention, though, you could have had all the help in the world, but if you didn't have the right attitude and the right commitment uh, to salvage the situation and to turn the situation around, you know, your your financial picture, it wouldn't have mattered, you know, and so I give you props for uh, not being a victim in the process. Oh, Kevin, I appreciate that, because at the end of the day, my wife said, you know, no matter where we are, just, you know, remember this feeling. We'll never go back to this again. You know, you know, you know, you can always just take a moment to, you know, to feel what the pain of what happened and then you know, move on. A lot of people cannot emotionally rebound. They cannot get themselves back together. And a lot of people just kind of would, would lay down. And I wasn't going to take that attitude. Our father raised us to be accountable and to be men and to get it back out there and, you know, get on our feet and do things properly. And, the NFL saw that. I mean, again, this program is only if you are willing to meet them halfway. If you're just sitting there and not going to show them that you have a plan to get yourself together, like, you know, for a future or you're not willing to work hard, they are not going to help you if you're not going to help yourself. So mm-hmm. they saw in me that I, that I had made just a very, very bad mistake. I had one job, you know, took me down. Again, it would have been something else because my company was not, was not on the right foundation anyway. So it could have been something else later on, but that was the one job that did it. And so the NFL saw I was just, I was a guy who made a a mistake and I was willing to get back out there and go to work. You were a good investment. I'm sure they they looked at it like that. Like, am I investing my money or am I just, you know, giving this to somebody that it's where it's going to be blown? And, you know, I'm sure they evaluated you like evaluating, you know, evaluating any kind of investment. Mm -hmm. Well, the great thing is, guys, they actually pay your bills for you. The money does not go into your actual hands. It goes directly to your payee or to your bills or to your companies that you owe the money that you're looking to get paid 
too. So that's the great thing about it. The NFL does not put the money in your actual hands. They actually just pay the bills for you to give you that financial relief to get yourself back on your feet. That is fantastic, you know, and it's among the stories that we don't hear. We hear a lot of, uh, you know, and, and, and let's face it, the NFL is a corporation like anything else. We live in a culture that's kind of hostile to corporations anyway, so it's, <laughs> it's natural to have the, the less than uh, attractive stories rise to the surface, but I'm so glad uh, that you brought this to our attention. And I also want to mention before uh, Chris asks his next question that the website is Ogden Elite footballcamp.com, Ogden, O-G-D-E-N, elitefootballcamp.com. Go ahead, Chris. Well, Marcus, uh, talk a little bit about the football camp. I mean, where, where did that come from? How long have you been doing that? And, uh, you know, kind of what's the, everything behind that whole story? You know, when I got approved for the grant, um, you know, I went to see a group called SCORE, which is kind of like, you know, your own personal type of mentorship uh, the guy who I spoke with, you know, along with my wife, felt it was time to leave Merrill Lynch. Yeah, I wasn't happy and tried to find my next calling. And I love sports. I love I love the youth. I love helping, you know, make them better. My grandfather was a boxing trainer who gave 60 years of his life to the Boys and Girls Club of America. So I had it rooted in me from, you know, birth. So I felt that this area, I live in Cary, North Carolina, could use some good, you know, mentorship, you know, didn't have a lot of good, you know, a lot of sports camps in the area, a lot of football camps. So my wife and I decided to uh, embark on that uh, opportunity. We actually used Living Social to get started because we didn't really know anybody. And within a two-year period, we built one of the most successful uh, sports brands here in the area. We have a 707, uh, you know, uh, programs throughout the spring and summer. We have our football camp throughout the summer. And we actually get sponsorship dollars. Like, uh, matter of fact, today, uh, Golden Corral came on to give us more financial help for helping the youth that are disadvantaged uh, get to camp for free. So wow. we have a lot of sponsors, such as the Dick Sporting Goods, one of our national sponsors, Golden Corral, uh, the National Guard, uh, Gatorade, uh, Marriott. And we have some large national and local sponsors that help us get the message out to kids that cannot afford it to come to camp anyway, to get that mentorship, coaching, and work on character and development at the same time. So is, a, is it set up as a nonprofit or is it a for-profit? It's a for-profit, but when it comes to the donations, we end up, uh, when the sponsors come, we trade off for them getting marketing, like advertising dollars, and then we just go ahead and write checks to the kids, and then they pay us through that program. So this is a, it's a write-off for, uh, for us. At the same time, they're getting marketing and advertising dollars, what they're using it as for their business. Very interesting. I think that's fantastic, and and uh, I love that you're doing this. Are the camps in one part of the country, or do you have them in several locations? Elaborate a little bit more on the logistical aspects. We are in Cary, North Carolina. The 707 is a national franchise. Um, uh, it's called NYFO. I own the franchise in the Cary Apex area, Holly Springs, which is basically like a, uh, right outside the Triangle area. So we are currently right now in about 25 states plus Canada for that 707 national franchise. My summer camps are run locally here in the Cary area. Um, we do one-day camps. Uh, actually, last year, Willie Park, who was a two-time Super Bowl champion with the Steelers, came out and helped coach. I worked this year with the Holt Brothers camp as well. They came out to kind of, you know, I went to their camp to kind of help out with them. I actually coached this year Russell Wilson's camp at NC State. So, you know, guys, and this is a very rich area for guys looking to do things, but as far as in the logistical standpoint, we're here in Cary uh, for the camp, and then we go nationally with 707 as a franchise company. Very good. Very good, Chris. Well, Marcus, uh, tell us, I guess, one, we need to know, uh, or listeners need to know where they can get your book. Um, mm-hmm. And if you have another story, you know, we got a, a couple more minutes. Couple minutes left. Uh, About a minute have, and a half. Yeah, if you got a, a quick story to share out of it that we hadn't discussed yet. Um, I'll tell you, the, you, people can purchase the book on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, and Books a Million. It's the title is Sleepless Nights: The NFL, A Business, and Family. If you type in Sleepless Nights on Barnes and Noble, we're number one uh, for having that title in the name of the book. We're number two on Amazon. We have twenty-two reviews. Twenty-one or five star. And then one is four star. Uh, a short thing in the book uh, that I will mention is when I was in high school, uh, my junior season of high school, I almost quit playing football because wow. I was a baby and I was very uh, just you know I was very impatient and prudent in my youth, and I wasn't starting on the offense like I thought I should have been. 
And my father told me, he said, Mark, you know what, son? I love you. Uh, you're my son. I don't care about football. That doesn't mean anything to me. You're my son. I want you to be happy. But if you quit today, five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you will hate yourself for quitting football and not doing what you know you love to do just because you had one bad practice. Mm -hmm. My advice to you is to get yourself, go to sleep, get some good rest, wake up in the morning, go back to see your head coach humbly, humbly go back to him and say, Coach, I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm here to earn my spot back. And I did that, and my coach actually put me on second string, and then I had to work my way back up to the first string on defense. And the funny thing is, guys, I was starting on defense, but we hadn't got to defense yet. Mm-hmm. So I, I was already starting, but I, we, I, we weren't part for that part of practice yet, and I had no idea. I was frustrated, and I wanted to quit. And my dad said, if you want to, son, I love you, but you will hate yourself 15, 20 years from now because you walked away and you never gave it your full potential. That's a great story, and I've told my kids the same thing, you know, and, and the ones who stayed with it were glad they did, and, and you know, because my kids are getting older now. The ones who didn't uh, really had regretted it, and, you know, and I had plenty of those regrets of my own because, frankly, my parents didn't encourage me that way. So uh, great story, and uh, Marcus Ogden, thanks so much for being with us. Sleepless Night, uh, make sure you check out that book. Chris Kidd, chriskidd.com, that's K-I-D-D, great as always. Thanks so much, buddy. All right, uh, when we come back tomorrow, we're going to have much more for you. I do want to remind you, the show continues 24-7 at priceofbusiness.com. While there, like it on Facebook, follow it on Twitter.